Crawford today? Yeah. Um, with the Forsling going down, that was uh, just to give him a chance to get going once he gets. Yeah, he's, he's cleared to play, and we want him getting playing. And uh, you know, he skated well with us in the last few weeks, and uh, now that he's cleared to to have the green light to go. I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays down there. I know the last two years he had really good starts through his season up here, and and uh, we'll see how he does. Will Forsberg go to Rockford? Uh, he cleared waivers, yeah. He's, uh, that's what uh, the plan is. Do you expect to get him uh, a heavy workload? How, how, do you, how do they plan to handle that? Um, well, we haven't talked about that, but uh, we, we expect him to play. Joel, when you have a period like you did against Tampa when you give up 30-something shots, well, what's like, the visceral reaction to that intermission? Um, it was kind of like it was a little bit of a reminder what happened against Columbus, um, where we, we don't have the puck at all. We're in our own end. The quality of the chances of the shots, uh, volume goes out to another level. But uh, that second was much worse than the Columbus one. Um, and both goalies uh, gave us a chance to come out of it uh, with a, a chance. And uh, that was uh, the positive end of it. But, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in situations like that, you got to find ways to stabilize it. When the momentum's against you, you got to find a way to recapture it as best you can. And uh, playing the right way, technically batting down the hatch in our own end, uh, shorten the shifts, and try to get a shift in the offensive zone is what you look for. And uh, but our puck possession over those two periods was uh, was I can't even imagine uh, the number of it, but it was uh, it was we never had the puck at all, and I think that was be and a lot of it was our own doing. Those periods were extreme, but I mean you are giving up a lot of shots this year. Do you feel it's you're a tweak or two away, or is it going to be something? I still think we we can be better with the puck, which uh, hence uh, you don't you know you're not going to be defending as much. But we uh, we feel the league uh, and more teams are shooting pucks and everything seems to be generated at the net in the offensive zone. Um, our chances are probably up a little bit, but that second period was a was a whole game worth in, in 20 minutes. And uh, but we're we we feel offensively we're always going to be in in a good enough shape to uh, find ways to get points, but. Uh, we definitely got to tighten up uh, defensively, whether it starts in the offensive zone, how we check back, or particularly our gap in the middle of the ice, and how we defend our own end in all different uh, situations. But we all got to be committed to playing that game. Joel, jumping off of that, um, I'm curious. An Anaheim had one of those games too, where just the shot clock so just went haywire. It, is it, does the long change factor at all? Uh, um, the, the, Change changes happen uh, when when they do have the puck and, and you do get some extended shifts and then you, you you had a long shift and you still can't get to the bench or you ice the puck and uh, you know, all of a sudden you're still not uh, recovering and uh, you, and then we talked about the momentum in that game or that stretches of games where you know you're 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 vulnerable to penalties you're vulnerable to uh, you know goals. And in those situations, well, you want to make find a way where you can stabilize it, and uh, you know everybody's going to have momentum in the course of a game, but you're more exposed to, in second periods to to that type of play. Joel Kane, he said he has a line line is changing around, but how much would you like to nail a line there where guys are consistent? Yeah, I I think that uh, you know Kaner's gets a lot of exposure even when he's on the line to play with other guys. And uh, we find that when he gets out there with Krugs, that line seems to be working all right. But I think that's a, a good option to have. Uh, but I'd like to have a, his line being more predictable and uh, dependable as far as what we expect from them. And, uh, you know, Sauter's coming off a game where I thought that uh, we liked what we saw. And then playing with Kaner can help him get that get going and and, uh, and already be there or Schmaltzy or the options. And uh, so we'll see. Is Schmaltz still, you, we talk about this a lot, you're still trying to drill into his head that he needs to shoot the puck a little bit more? Yeah, I think that uh, whether it's shooting or uh, getting a position to get your shot through, I think he's starting to think a little bit more shots, uh, the shot look and the shot, uh, whether it's one-timers or uh, shooting through screens, finding a way to get it through. Um, and, uh, you know, when he's not with, with Kaner, I think there's a little bit more. Maybe that can help with his mentality where, you know, you're thinking shot more than pass. What do, you, what do you like about? Oh, I pick you back off that. What do you like about him playing on the right side as opposed to the left? Um, we'll see. I know that uh, you know he's played left, he's played center, and hasn't played much right. Um, I want to see if he can how he handles it over there. I know Forts is better on the left, and that might have been part of the uh, decision to put him on the right. Have you been keeping tabs on Aitzel and, and uh, Secura down at Rockford? Yeah, yeah, we get uh, good uh, full uh, <clears throat> coverage as far as. Uh, the viewings, uh, you know, the talking, uh, you know, but we, 
yeah, we're I think he missed the game too, Edsel. So it's a uh, we're we're familiar with what's going on. Joe, what were the three elements of Brandon Saad's game that you liked from Sunday that promoted him to the next line? I thought he had the puck way more. I thought he took it to the net well, um, and uh, I think his speed was noticeable. Um, well, playing with dunks, you're going to get um, quality ice time. You're going to get minutes, and uh, and I think that uh, you know he had some exposure with all situations, being on the power play, and then penalty killing, and then last game uh, we put Siebs on it. So it's a uh, it's a lot uh, for a young kid uh, having all three right off the bat and, and, and a pretty good workload. But I thought uh, his uh, his game is. I still think he's competitive in the puck area. I think he's learning uh, the position as well on a game-to-game -game basis because these guys are our team are a lot of top players uh, that he gets a guild goal against. You know, they keep the puck. They you know they position themselves where it's protected and, and trying to get your where you're influencing it, where you can break up a play or his options. Uh, that's a that's a learning uh, thing for him as well. Um, but I still think he's he's quick to people um, offensively. I think he can uh, our whole D can be a little bit more active, and when we are, it's a big difference to our team game. So he can add that to his uh, uh, thinking every shift. But we're uh, you know he's still been fine. We we, we think that uh, you know whether it's who's playing the most minutes, I think it's pretty comparable as far as the most. Kind of amazing that you have a 19-year-old playing like that. I mean, do you imagine 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you're coaching or having a 19? Um, well, it's a, it says that you know, I think the last couple of years, I think Gus started off the season playing uh, some big minutes early. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, that's a, uh, you know, you, you don't mind it, though, when you've got a young guy that, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's excited about it. I think he's only going to get better. And uh, that exposure over the course of a season can help him uh, as the season progresses handle uh, uh, in more important situations, and you learn uh, the game a lot quicker in that type of positioning. But we all still aware of the, the long term uh, that we want to make sure that he keeps keeps getting better. Joel, when the team is having puck possession issues, what's your patience level like this early in the season? How far we need to? Well, we got tested two games in a row for sure, um, but it's been way better than it was last year. Um, whether it's uh, sustained offensive zone shifts where we, you know, you get a couple. Of, Two or three a game where uh, you got the other team hemmed in their end, in their end all of a sudden uh, really changes the momentum in the game. And I think that uh, you know we've always been in those situations where we do have games like that, and uh, and then all of a sudden we're on the receiving end. It's a, it's a different way of viewing it, and uh, knowing that uh, we want the puck in the worst way and we want to keep it as long as we can. So that's uh, and finding a way to uh, where we're we're better with it, it starts with their exits, starts with uh, uh, being available and, uh, and our D being active as well. But it's a, uh, it's something that uh, we can still be better in getting it back quicker. That's mm -hmm. that's the area that probably bothers them the most. On the other end, um, why are so many shots coming through right now? Well, some of those are those long shifts. I think uh, we they had second and the volume of uh, opportunities off one shot seems to be uh, the second and third and fourth opportunities, which can happen. I think that's uh, we can be better and neater cleaning up uh, shots and rebounds and people standing around our net. Um, that's that's an area where we can improve as a defense core.